thanks to NCS. Thank you very much to NCS. And we're talking about alternative routes into all different types of jobs. And we've got two very special, special guests. We've got Seb and Siobhan on the couch with us. Um, So my first question has to be, did you guys put all of your eggs into the same basket, into what you're doing now? Or did you kind of ease your way in? Let me start with you, Seb. Uh, I think I put all my eggs into one basket at different times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of people say that if you have a plan B, then plan A ain't going to work. Do you know what I mean? I do believe in that to a certain extent. However, I don't think it's a bad thing to have multiple things happening at the same time. Um, I have a number of things I do now, but when I started off, whether that's in the solar or into any of the other different businesses, I was full all in on that one Mm -hmm. thing for sure. Um, There is a lot to it in today's world, the opportunity and to try different things. Side hustles are great, massive advocate of that, um, especially while you're working, trying to develop your own thing. But I think there's a certain element if you're trying to do something big, you've got to sort of be all in on it, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. All right, Siobhan, what about yourself from content creation, PT and football? I dashed all of them into one. <laughs> I said, because this has to, it has to work. It has to work. <laughs> all of them eggs got in that one basket. Um, yeah, because obviously, like I said before, um, I my main goal was just I wanted to play football. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's it. Like, But thankfully, the way it kind of worked was that I was able to still run my own business alongside of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would agree with you. If you are, if it is something that you're really passionate about and you really want it to work, I feel like you've got to sort of put put everything into it. And I'm a very all in or nothing person anyway. Yeah. So um, yeah, when I left, obviously working for Royal Mail, I was like, this has to work. Like mm. I didn't have a plan B because I was like, I don't want a plan B because if yeah. I have a plan B, then plan A is not going to work. Yeah. Going back to what you said. Um, so yeah, I was just like, all them eggs, get them in there mm. now. Load it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hope yeah. drop them. <laughs> and I mean, the basket becomes quite heavy, right? And oh, so no person it. is an island. I think when you're building these things, you know, you need help along the way. When did you realize, Siobhan, and I'll come to you, Seb, when did you realize, Siobhan, that you needed help along the journey? And how did you find the people that you needed to support your goals and, you know, move you along your journey? Um, I actually... I think it was only about six months into me actually like doing it full time. Um, obviously, I got like a social media manager because like brands were coming to me and I didn't have a clue. I, obviously, I'd not been in this space before. So like they were asking me to do things. I was like, yeah, I'll do it for free. Like, you know, like I will just, do you know what I mean? But I didn't have a, I didn't have a clue. Like, And these brands were rinsing me. And did anyone stop you and say, not even anyone at a brand, did they ever stop you and say, actually... Someone take you to a side and say you should be getting paid. For nah, this. but so. like like I said, because I'd never been in that in that space before. I didn't know how nothing worked. I was just gassed to be working with whatever these brands. Yeah, were. don't name them, please. Yeah. You said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, obviously, I I came across a my social media manager by accident. Um, well, I say accident, but I don't believe that there's anything as that, like there's no such thing as a coincidence. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Um, But yeah, anyway, we ended up working together and then she really helped me in terms of building my brand, um, kind of having a vision of what it is, like having, setting goals to what I want to achieve in the next couple of years. And like I'm telling you now, I would not have the following that I have if it wasn't for her. So um, yeah, I think it's not, you do have to, it's important to ask for help and get it from the right people. Did you realise you needed her before you came across her though? Do you understand my question? Yeah. Because you said you wouldn't have had that. But yeah. But you spoke about no, how would I know that I need someone to navigate this and, you know, make sure that I get paid if I don't know that's a thing. Mm. When did you realise that you needed somebody to come along and say, oh, I'm going to support you? I th- Do you know what? I, I don't know, you know. That, that's that's no a pressure. hard question. It's like... I think because I I kind of realised how quick and how fast I was growing, and like I said, it wasn't a thing where I intended to even be in that space. I think subconsciously I was like, right, I need to get someone on board 
to protect me as soon as possible, Makes like sense. sooner rather than later. Um, because like I said, I knew how quickly like things were moving and I was just like, whoa, like this is, like it got a bit overwhelming at one point, like, because I was just like, this is a lot. This is, I never intended for this to happen and like, I'm getting all this following, all these comments, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, so yeah, I think it was like more of a sub subconscious thing to be like, right, I need someone in the background who's gonna protect me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, thank you for that, Siobhan, because I think when we speak about success and the journey, we talk about the wins. We don't always speak about the emotional impact of having a big following or having a very public career and it takes off. So I think that overwhelm a lot of young people, even me, myself in the career that I do, I've experienced that overwhelm and I think it's really important to acknowledge. So thank you so much for being really candid about that. Um, Seb, what about for you? So, you you know, you started your business, you knew the direction you were going in. When did you realize you needed help and how did you find those people? Yeah, I think uh, to start with, I didn't realize and I tried to do absolutely everything myself. And when you start your own business, like you can get other people around you and there, you can get some good people, def definitely, as you clearly had. Um, but no one's ever going to care about it as much as you are. Like, not just impossible to. So I do think there's an awful lot for um, being deep in and trying to understand every single part of yourself and grinding. And I, I wouldn't want it to be a barrier to anyone looking to start something to think that you have to have loads of outside help because there is help everywhere around us now. So YouTube even. YouTube. I you mean, know, what we're doing right exactly, now. Exactly. Right? Things like this can be an inspiration or can be a tool and there's tutorials. You can pretty much teach yourself to do so many things now. Um, but equally, to get to the next level, every time I've grown any business, whether that was a solar panel thing, whether that's as we've grown Hashtag United, whether that's my agency more recently, whether that's my own golf content, I've got full-time members of staff in each of those areas now. And without them, first of all, I'd never be able to do all of it. Second of all, none of it would have been able to grow without doing that because there's just not enough hours in the day. You end up driving yourself crazy and burn out and then you can't do those things. So I think as, uh, when, once you get to that point where you're confident something's working, the quicker you can find the way to scale it, the better. And getting good people on board is one of the biggest challenges, I think. Um, I've made some mistakes along the way of, of hiring my friends, and that's worked incredibly well. One of the guys who's like my right hand man at my agency is a guy I've known from before this, and he's like an invaluable team member. I've had friends work for me before that I've had to then let go, and it's been very challenging, and it sort of ended friendships in a way. So it's very, very difficult to navigate, but um, that is getting help, whether that's yourself, you know, you can help yourself by learning from other people. It doesn't have to be getting full-time people. You, people aren't going to be in the position to do that straight away, but it's going out there and expanding your horizons um, from the very beginning is what everyone should look to do and just learn, learn, learn. And just to add to your point about there's so many platforms, you've got NCS, we love you NCS. You've got the Princess Trust, you've got so many different charities, so many different outsources. Um, but you've also got people closer to home as well, yeah. fam friends, family, teachers. So just a quick one, if you could narrow it down to maybe just one person for sake of time, like when we do think about help, it can be huge, but it can also be quite close as well. So who you want to shout out that's been with you for your journey, <laughs> who you can rely on and be like, yeah, actually this person is a great source of help for me. Get the flowers journey. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll always go back to my parents. Yeah. Always from the very beginning, whether that's as a young, young boy, all the way through to, you know, I ended up working with my dad in the solar panel. Well, my dad's involved in the football club now as well. Just having him as someone I've always been inspired by alongside my mum uh, and learnt from how to be a good, hopefully a good person, as much as do other things. So yeah, I'll always, I'll always come back to my parents. Mm. Yeah, I'll say my parents as well, to be fair. I think through everything that I've done up until like this point in my life, even though there has been some, you know, mis misinterpretations, um, they have supported me through literally everything. And I know you said one person, but I'm gonna say my best friend as well, um, known her since I was, um, 12 or 13 my best friend phoebe um so yeah we go way back like she's literally been there from the start mm. um supported me through everything up until now so yeah those are mine nice i mean that's very nice but you know me and you are a bit messy right oh god i've got this <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey don't act for the camera no, no, you know? no, sorry, sorry. Go on. i mean you know we want to we want to get into the the drama a little bit right because it's this isn't smooth sailing, let's be real. Never. We can have this nice conversation. It's really good to hear about your journey in the beginning, middle, the end, but there are ups and downs. And if you feel, I want you to be comfortable with us, family vibe, you know what I mean? Um, what has been the biggest problem that you have experienced along the way and how did you deal with it? Because I think quite often when we hear stories about 
I don't know, alternative routes or success. We cherry pick all of the great parts, right? We talk about all of the success and the great moments, but there must have been massive boulders or massive barriers or massive issues that existed along that journey. Um, and I think it's really important that we speak about that side. What was the biggest problem that you you encountered along the journey and how did you deal with it? Um, to be fair, mine's pretty recent. Um, I had like a major knee injury like- Sorry to hear that. In April of last year. And I'm, I'm coming towards the back end of it, but I done, basically done my ACL. Um, my that ACL. is real. What is ACL for people who don't know? So Why is that such a big injury? So it's the, I think it's anterior crucial ligament in your knee. It basically runs through like the center of your knee and stops your knee from like hyperextending and allows you to pivot basically. Um, so yeah, if that goes, you've got basically no stability in your knee basically. Um, so yeah, this was April of 2023. Um, yeah, just obviously playing a game, football, no one touched me, literally just planted my foot to change direction, knee just went in and out. So it's like, it's not like a season, like like, like a, what's it called, career ending injury, but my season was done, do you know what I mean? It's like a max, probably like 12, 12 months. That's a big And I'm hit. at like 10, 11 at the moment. Um, so I've, I'm literally like a week away of getting match minutes, um, but for me, I've never had any like major injury, like I don't get injured. Um, you know, I'm coming up to like 30 now. So I've never suffered with injuries. I've had like little niggles like here and there, but nothing that's put me out for a long period of time. And for someone who's so used to being active in terms of like, obviously playing football, doing what I do in the gym and like PT and stuff to then having absolutely nothing, mm. like mentally it was, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. Um, so obviously for me that meant no football, no gym, couldn't make no content. And I was just like, literally just sitting here on, on the couch, like just, what do I do? But whenever, obviously when, when these big things happen, like you never understand it when it happens, you're like, why is this happening to me? Like, but there's, like I said before, there's, there's never, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. And it may not make sense in that time, but, for me, I think, cause I, like I said, I, I just go, I don't know when to stop, I'm like a workaholic. So for me, that was like the universe saying, oh, you don't want to sit down and take a rest? Okay, cool. You're resting yeah, now. Yeah, you got to rest now. <laughs> um, so Did yeah, I think- that though? Was there a Oh, 100%, 100%. Like now I know, I know like the, the triggers of when I'm getting like mentally, drained like I get is it no I get physic I get physically drained before I go mentally so now I can pick that apart and be like right you just need to chill out S stop working for like a couple days and just take like have some self-care or something like have a bath do you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> like candles <laughs> yeah <laughs> bath bomb and then um yeah so it like it's made me realize that it's not it's not good to go 100 miles an hour all the time. Like the work is just as important as the rest. Mm. Um, so yeah, that that's that's my one, very recent. And I think Siobhan in a culture where we always promote no sleep while you sleeping, oh, I'm grinding, no, no, I'm I always on eight a, hours, bro. I think I you, eight you hours. said something I think really important. And Seb, I didn't ask you, what lesson did you learn from solving that problem? The biggest problem that you've had in, in your journey? Yeah, well, you know what? Another one I really quickly touch on was more recently, and it's, it's been spoken about publicly, is at Hashtag United, we lost one of our main sponsors and they went bust in the UK uh, and they owed us hundreds of thousands of pounds and that money was crucial for us funding the club. Um, and that was a really worrying time because we were like, we we're getting promotions and we're trying to grow the media side of it and try to grow the playing side of it, like improve the teams to keep getting promoted and making better content. And literally we were relying on this money and it was a five year contract. So it wasn't just the money we were owed for that season, but it was another four years. And we're like, oh my God, it's gone. And it had to be simply a case of going out there and grinding, which is one of the things I do for the club, is the commercial side of it, going out and talking to brands and trying to find someone that could come up and help us grow. And the only way to um, to get past that 
was to think a little bit outside the box and try and find different ways to appeal to brands, different content to make or being a little bit more strategic about who you go after and probably just increasing the work rate because we needed it quick, really, to be told. But the um, the biggest thing with uh, all of that, trying to think about how we've learned from it, is to now think about, well, when we've got longer-term contracts, can we be a little bit, a little bit smarter about getting more money up front or if someone is a late payer, for example, talking about invoices, mm. maybe be a little bit more proactive and not just thinking, oh, yeah, it'll be fine, they'll pay. They're a, ma- they're a massive company. This company's multinational global brand. Their UK licensee went pop. Sack loads of people. is a disaster for us. It could have been really, really bad. Luckily, we'd taken some investment before, so we had a small buffer just to get us through that period. So it's now allowed us to think differently. Mm. Now we look, we do things like creditor insurance. So if we have someone that has a long-term um, contract with us, we can actually go in for a small fee, get that insured. If that happened again, we know we're covered. So we might lose a little bit of the cream on the top of a contract, but we know that we're getting some money, for example. So there's so many things that are out there that you can investigate and look at, and that comes from getting advice and, and learning as well. Mm, yeah. Safeguarding. Yeah. Um, you spoke about just so many things that you guys do alongside your day to days, um, and kind of yes, rest is absolutely <laughs> a need. Please. Go to bed, go to yeah. bed, get your rest and get your eight hours sleep. Do you know what I mean? But when you get that rest work balance beautifully done. It frees you up to do so many different yeah, things. But true. my question is, why? Why is it? Because when you said, right, I've hit a mill now, I want two. Like, you could constantly be on this rat race of it not not feeling content. So why do you do so much outside of what you do? Um, and what drives you so that you do find contentment in it all? Do you want to go? No, you can go. Go. <laughs> okay. The answer is, I don't know if I do. Being really honest, I something I talk about a lot is that I do so many different things, whether it's my own personal golf content, Hashtag United, or my agency looking after a number of different younger content creators. Whenever I'm doing one, I feel like I'm letting the others down. Mm -hmm. I never know which ones to be doing, yet people say to me, oh, you could do this with the agency, or you could do this with your golf channel if you just didn't do this. I'm like, but I love doing all those things. So I like being diversified. Mm -hmm. I love all those things I do, but I'm acutely aware that it's a contradiction of what I said earlier. To make one of them as big as they could be, I need to almost triple and quadruple down it. So I've hired more people in each of them to allow me to keep growing them. But I don't know if I get that balance right. So I've got a young family. I'm married. I've got two young kids. And that's the biggest thing is like when we're on holidays, when you work for yourself, that don't exist. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. around the pool, there's an email or there's a call where they're saying, yes, other people can do it, but it's my thing. You know, you need to be involved. And it's the biggest challenge for me is, is getting better at that. I think I heard you speak about it a little bit off camera earlier. I'm on a massive journey right now to improve my health and my fitness and my diet. I'm doing all this sorts of stuff. There's so much you could do on that that I never t- I took for granted when I was when I was younger. I just thought my body would always eat what I want, do what I want, whatever. But you get one chance at life and your whole experience is through how your mind and your body feel. So I definitely would encourage anyone out there to invest in their their well-being, mm-hmm. whether that's mental health, whether that's physical health, whatever it is, it's going to allow you to be the best version of yourself mm. um, if you get that right to start with. Yeah, big time. How about yourself, Siobhan? Do you feel like you do a lot of things outside of your main nine to fiving? Too much. Yeah. Like, I think it, you touched on it just then about not wanting other people to do yeah. other things. Like, I'm, the thing that takes up most of my time is editing mm. my mm. content. But I just can't. I can't. You're I've got to do it. Yeah. I've, yeah. I, ha- I, me, have to do it. <laughs> because... You know I'm, your own source. Yeah, like... like yeah. I get people can... There's people out there who can edit, but, like, are you going to put in the same meme that I put in? Mm. Are you going to say... Are you going to zoom in on the part that I want you to zoom into? Mm. Do you get what I mean? So it's just, like... I'm stubborn anyway. I'm stubborn by nature, so I'm very, like... My things are my things and I find it very hard to let it go. But I'm just like, if you had someone to edit your video, Shiv, your time would be so free. Yeah. But I just can't, can't do it. But then it's not good because then I don't have a lot of time to myself. Mm. But, What's yeah. the solution? I, I ain't got there yet. I'll, I tell, I'll there. talk to you after. <laughs> oh, you got someone. Why, talk why to all of us. In it, backstage gems, man. Because I had the same thing. Going through it, like I, I'm not a very good editor, but I thought I had to learn how to edit. So it's on my golf content um, to figure it out. And I have an editor now who does it. And I had the same thing to start with. And there's one tool, you probably heard of this anyway. There's loads of alternatives. I won't say a name of it necessarily, but 
they will send it's short form as well short form and long form they'll send you a link to your video how they've edited it and allows you to give notes in real time on 1 minute 32 I did it this morning on one of my golf videos I'm filmed film with Colin Morikawa one of the best golfs in the world the edit's brilliant but for example I wanted it punched in on a point and I can go 3 minute 32 click I go here punch in on my face and then pull away play this sound effect right oh, and after you do so that sweet. after you do that oh, you're it's all taking months, notes listening to the this. editor that you use starts to know so where i used to you look at the the project file of the yeah, one so of my videos after they get used to your edits doing it. so season, now it? the project file the first few edits like i've left like six thousand notes on a 20 minute video so this morning it's like i'm leaving four you've got they get it now i mean I'm, we're coming close to time yeah but it's kind of inspired my final question because you're talking about tools you've spoken about something that's you know will make your journey easier you're offering gems here the final question i want to ask to you both briefly is looking across that whole journey where you began and where you are now is there anything you change about it and if there was one thing you could change what would it be siobhan nothing not as much as a grind thing. and and treacherous times there has been, I wouldn't change nothing. So if that. I changed something, then I wouldn't be here. Yeah. And it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting there telling my story otherwise. Um, like, I don't regret anything that I've done like at the time. I don't regret anything that I'm doing now. Because um, like I said, if I change anything about the whole process, I don't think I'd be sat in this chair talking about this right now. I love that. Thank you, Siobhan. Seb? I'd probably say the same thing, you know, like I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky and fortunate to do what I do. Like I don't take that lightly and I've tried to get better at being like consciously grateful of those things. One thing I do think about more recently is I've been, like, I've gone to some serious events, got to meet some incredible people. And when I was coming up into that world a little bit, I maybe didn't appreciate that as much as I do now. And I think if I'd gone back, like, I really believe in the ability to network and to like build your contact list. I wish I had that mindset at the beginning because some of the people I got to meet that I just thought, oh yeah, great, yeah, hi, yeah, I'm Seb, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But like, what an opportunity to make the most of those those opportunities. So I'm really squeezing it and I think I'm more conscious about that now than I used to be. Like little things, if I ever get very, very lucky, if I go on a, a trip and I someone buys me a nice airplane seat, I'll be like, wow, I'm lucky. Think about this. All the people in this part of the, of the airplane, they're successful or they're, so like, what a great chance to network. Like I'll go and sit in the lounge a bit and like just look for, make a conversation. You never like, once you get like, get into those, those scenarios, they can open up so many doors. So I wish I'd maybe had that mindset a bit earlier. Seizing the moment. Yeah. Makes sense. Absolutely. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I love that, yeah, you just said about all things about, everyone's got to start somewhere. Everyone's got to start somewhere and thankful for your journeys of starting where you did so that we have you two here on this couch now to hear the journey in full speed. So, yeah, we want to say a massive thank you to Seb and to Javon. Thank you very much for coming through and just dropping gems, 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 gems about alternative routes to see how you can get there and all the skills that you've used along your journey. And if you want to find out more, make sure you check them out on socials. And if you like what you heard, make sure you head over to wearencs.com. They have a range of experiences to help you build new skills, add to your CV, and just generally have fun. And don't forget to check out the NCS YouTube channel for our previous session on all things finance, housing, and health.